First and foremost, I want to show you all the HTML I'm using on this page. So first, we've got an H1 at the top, and that's simply the, the title of our page. And then drilling into a div that is class grid, you can see that I then have 12, I believe 12, uh, grid items going through. And they don't have any content. I'm specifically setting those height values uh, in CSS right now, just as an example to show. So here are all those divs. They're each one grid underscore underscore item. And then the CSS, we've got some simple styling. I'm importing a Google font just for the header. Uh, I'm setting a height and a font size value. Uh, nothing that is going to actually affect the way that the grid is showing. I'm setting a VW uh, to keep things responsive for the min height. And I'm also setting box sizing border box just to be safe. So from there, we're actually going to come up here to where the grid magic happens. And as an example, first we want to talk about how the display uh, property in CSS works. By default, a div is going to be display block, which means that HTML is going to render it straight down the page according to its HTML um, position. It is not in, you can very easily change that. It could be in line. They're going to put it all side by side, or you could do what everyone's doing nowadays and display these flex and they're automatically going to flex to be uh, a layout that is all the items in one row uh, as far down as it can get in terms of size. Today we're going to do display grid which is the first step to utilizing the new CSS layout module uh, grid layout and then from there we need to define a way for this grid to behave. You'll notice unlike Flexbox, we are not automatically putting this grid with items side by side. That's because it's waiting for us to actually define our rows and our, and our columns. And we do that with a CSS property called grid template columns, or conversely, grid template rows. Uh, today we're just doing columns. And I'm going to define the number of columns and the size of the columns at the same time by utilizing a, uh, a CSS uh, a unit of some sort. In this case, I'm going to use fractions, which is a new CSS unit that is specifically made for grid and for flexbox. And so I'm going to specify four columns uh, of equal space, of equal free space. So one FR, one FR, one FR. And you'll see after I complete that, we now have a grid four across and three deep. And if we added more content, it would continue populating into that spot. So this is no big deal. This is exactly what Flexbox would allow us to do as well by setting a flex basis or a hard width on each of those items. The key to understanding why grid is important is going to be the idea of multi-dimensional layout. So not only can we lay it out across one dimension, aka left to right or up and down, and then have it stack, we can specify the size of a grid item child to be not only a new width, but also a new height based on the grid template rows and columns. So you'll notice on here, I've got grid item and I am using SAS. And so I've got the, the uh, syntax here to find the second child, the nth child in, in CSS. And all I'm gonna do is specify the grid row, uh, grid column that I, columns that I want this to span. I'm gonna say, I want you to span two columns. Sorry, this is singular grid column. And you can see my tomato colored box is now spanning two of my columns. And that's, again, nothing major. We could have done that with a flex grow value of two compared to the flex grow values of one uh, in, in the flex box syntax. But I can also specify my grid rows as well. And I can tell it to span two. And that's gonna allow it to take up that vertical space or even span three and push down even further. This allows us to not have to have hacks, not have to bring more HTML into a document than absolutely necessary. All of these grid items are on the same level. They're all siblings. And then we can also tell it to begin at different places as well. So if I didn't want this to begin at the second column where it automatically is going to be, I could tell it to start at the first column and then span to. I could tell it to start at the third column and span to. And you can see it has holes in here and, and Grid has some ways of taking care of that automatically for you with a couple of CSS properties we'll get into later. Uh, but the basic basics are that you can have it span two, three, four uh, rows and columns uh, very, very easily.